from first term senator to uh, presidential candidate to now presumptive presidential nominee Joe Biden's running mate, Senator Kamala Harris's career has been shattering uh, glass ceilings everywhere. And now it looks like she may be paving a way for more women of color to have a seat at the table. So let us talk about this. We want to bring in Amy Allison, founder and president of She the People. Uh, Amy, um, so this has been quite a journey for Kamala Harris, and she's bringing the rest of the country along with her, I think. First, let us talk about the field of candidates that the Joe Biden campaign had to choose from, because there were a lot of good ones and a lot of women of color, very accomplished and successful and would have been good matches. Why did Kamala Harris, do you believe, sort of, why did she rise to the top of the list? Well, I think so many black women and women of color, I think six uh, black women and seven women of color in all were being vetted for the role of VP, all with impressive careers and credentials, as you said. Uh, I think um, in the end, it was um, quite a testament to uh, how powerful, the recognition of how powerful uh, women of color is a voting bloc uh, is, is the core of the multiracial inclusive voting coalition the Democrats need to win, particularly in battleground states. But it was also quite a testament to how deep the bench is for women of color who, although we're the most engaged citizens and we have the highest turnout, particularly black women, we are underrepresented at every level of government. So uh, I, we, you know, we didn't want to stop with Kamala, who has such an impressive record. Um, she really does help deepen enthusiasm uh, for the base of women of color who are going to be the highest turnout, most critical vote uh, to get out in November. But the rest of the women, we expect to see them. I mean, we don't just want to stop with Kamala. We we want uh, women of color, maybe some of whom had been vetted uh, to hold key positions in the cabinet and other influential policy building. We want to see women of color influence the Biden-Harris plan in the first 100 days. So uh, we want to uh, see Latina, Asian American, Black and Indigenous women on all levels of governance. I think that is a great point that you bring up. I think sometimes we have seen this in corporate America, where you may get a person of color getting a very key high profile role in a hierarchy, um, but it's difficult for, for that one person to um, be the, the vehicle for tremendous change when you're trying to change a whole institution, right? You need people at multiple levels. And I, I don't know, when I watched um, Kamala Harris's debate performance, what I thought to myself is, here's somebody who has the ability to push back when it comes to Joe Biden, has the ability to firmly present her argument with Joe Biden. Uh, and so I want to ask you, what do you think her influence will be within this campaign, and, and more specifically, sort of the policies that they're putting together for the American people? It's, it, there's so many facets to what you said. She's, she's tough, she's skilled, she's ready to lead on day one. Um, you know, I want to just call attention to how uh, the senator has showed up in the last four months or so. Uh, she was one of the first from the Senate to show solidarity by showing up to protest in solidarity with the mm. uh, people in the streets in the wake of George Floyd's murder. Uh, she's advocated for cash payments in the Senate. Of course, McConnell uh, and uh, the senators went home before guaranteeing that for uh, Americans who are hurting. But she's been an advocate advocate for these kind of cash payments to get us through uh, these difficult economic times. She's been an advocate for essential workers, the majority of whom are women of color who are putting their lives on the line to make sure that we have essential services. She's showing up. You know, the, the thing, and she just tweeted this again yesterday, for, for black uh, women, for brown women, it matters that she continues to bring up the name of Breonna Taylor, you know, when she says, I still have not forgotten her. And the, she's calling for justice, racial justice, economic justice, at a time when the country's really hurting. Uh, I expect that she'll be that voice, along with how tough she is uh, in, in all these other respects, as you mentioned. I expect that she'll work with Joe Biden to craft a plan for the American people to address our biggest problems in the midst of COVID and the economic crisis. All right. Uh, Amy Allison, really great talking to you. Hopefully we can have you on again because there's so many other topics I'd like to touch on. Thank you.